Hey everyone, I'm Harvest Build Destroy, and in this video I want to talk about hotkeys. Specifically, how to design your own hotkeys in AoE 2. I'm not going to tell you specifically what keys you should use for certain things, but rather some basic principles to help guide you in the direction of designing a unique hotkey set that works for you. So where do you start if you want to design your own hotkeys? I think it's important to remember that you don't necessarily have to start from scratch. Honestly, you probably shouldn't. If you're already used to the old school default hotkeys, HDs, hotkeys, a grid layout, or whatever, use that as your starting point. It's probably not a good idea to change too many of your hotkeys at once. I mean, if you can't remember them, what good are they? This isn't to say that you can't completely change your hotkeys from the ground up, but if that's your goal, you might want to consider doing it in stages instead of all at once. Well, unless you're looking to use a grid layout. In that case, you probably don't have any other choice than to jump right in and hope for the best. But if that was your goal, you probably wouldn't need to watch a hotkey video anyway. What I'm going to talk about here is how to design your own unique hotkey set. One that feels like a well-worn in pair of shoes. Comfortable because months of walking in them have chiseled its soles into the shape of your feet like rainwater erodes rock. There are essentially no rules for designing your own hotkeys beyond whatever seems to work for you. But there are certain principles, like not changing more than you can keep track of at once, that may nudge you in the right direction. I think this point is worth hitting home. There's no such thing as a perfect hotkey setup, and your hotkeys don't need to make sense to anyone but you. By all means, ignore anything I say in this video that doesn't click for you. Very good players use hotkeys and control groups that don't seem very efficient to me. For example, Jadong only uses control groups 1 to 3 for units and 4 to 6 for hatcheries, no exceptions. How he moves a 200 supply Brood War Zerg army around the map like that is beyond me, but it obviously works for him. Similarly, if you watch Viper's recent hotkey video, you might notice, like I did, that a lot of his more important hotkeys are all the way on the right-hand side of the keyboard. And for most of his AoE2 career, Hera used the W, A, S, and D keys to move the camera. I couldn't imagine using any of these myself, but these setups have obviously worked for these players. I wouldn't recommend copying them, but the point is that what works for one or even most players may not work for you. The next thing I want to mention, which I've just alluded to, is that you probably want to organize your hotkeys such that the majority of them, or at least the most important ones, are in close proximity to wherever your hand's default position on the keyboard is. Assuming you're using a QWERTY keyboard, in 99.9% .9 of cases, this means the left-hand side of the keyboard. Pretty simple. As much as possible, you don't want to have to reposition your hand while you're playing, and you also don't want to have to look away from your monitor and glance at your keyboard to make sure you're hitting the right key. Unless you're a really good one-handed typist, you probably will find yourself glancing at your keyboard when you reach for a hotkey on the right-hand side of the keyboard like O or P, so it's probably best to avoid using keys over there for things you need to use often. I think this is particularly significant in AoE 2 because there are lots of different buildings in the game and your economic and military building hotkeys are not allowed to conflict. What I mean by that is that even though you have a separate hotkey for your economic and military building tabs, B and V by default, you can't use the same letter for a building in each tab. This is something I was hoping they would give us a toggleable option for in DE, as it would make it much easier to keep all of your villager build hotkeys in easily accessible locations, even if it would pair a bit awkwardly with the go-to building commands. That is, control A to go to archery range, control B to go to barracks, etc. As it is, you basically have to use every letter on your keyboard if you want a hotkey for every building, unless you resort to using some kind of modifier key. Because of this, you need to put some thought into which buildings you relegate to the right-hand side of the keyboard. There are a lot of buildings that you generally only build once or twice per game, and those are the ones that you should consider using less convenient keys for. I'll give you a couple of examples of how I've changed my own hotkeys with this in mind. I started with the original game's default hotkeys back in the MSN Gaming Zone days, and my approach to adjusting my hotkeys has always been to just alter what I'm already used to bit by bit. By default, in the original CD version of the game, the hotkey to build a stable is L, and I always found that inconvenient given how many stables you can end up building in a single game. Control L is also quite a stretch. In order to actually remember my hotkeys on an ongoing basis, I try as much as possible to have my hotkeys correspond to one of the letters in its name, and ideally the first. So naturally, I changed it to S, which by default is the blacksmith. I had previously been used to using R for armory in AOM and AoE 3, so now I use it for the blacksmith. I've made similar changes to the mill, which is I by default, and the siege workshop, which is K by default. If you're a bit unclear about when you should switch a hotkey, approach it like this. If there's a hotkey that you continually find clunky as you play the game, change it. If you find yourself continually misclicking in the same way, change the hotkey to something that you won't misclick. I'll give you another example. By default, mining camp is G, but I've changed mine to C for camp. The reason for this is that I would occasionally misclick H, which would deselect the villagers and move my camera to the town center, forcing me to manually find them again and wasting several seconds. 
For a while, I didn't use the G key for anything because I was always afraid of misclicking H. I guess this is a particularly bad misclick, but if you find yourself misclicking in the same way game after game, especially if it happens while performing a common task, you might want to reconsider that hotkey. On the topic of misclicking, unless your ability to immediately reposition your hand to its default position is pitch perfect, it might not always be the best idea to clump too many similar hotkeys together in a row. This is something I realized playing MOBAs. In Dota, I always used legacy keys, which had different hotkeys for every hero, and they were spread out around the keyboard, so I never had any issues with misclicking abilities. When I attempted, unsuccessfully, to get into League of Legends, I found that the standard QWER ability hotkeys were unusable because they were so close together that I would sometimes use the wrong ability when I had to react quickly in the moment. If I remember correctly, I ended up binding them to something like E, T, C, and Q just to make sure they were all easily accessible keys, but far apart enough that I would never hit the wrong one. I do the same thing now in AoE with my ungarrison, set gather point, and send villagers back to work hotkeys. I ungarrison with Q, set my rally points with Z, and send villagers back to work with F. They're all easy to access, but not adjacent, so even if I misclick, at least I'm not misclicking a similar function. Basically, to the extent you can, you want to make your hotkeys as disaster-proof as possible. Kind of like how I stopped using G for mining camp, although admittedly I use G for stone gate now and haven't had any issues misclicking. But with your building commands, I would advise against using adjacent hotkeys for ungarrison and send back to work, because you don't want to be in a position where you've just been raided and you accidentally send all of your villagers in the TC to your rally point when most of them were farmers, for example. Little things like this can waste a few seconds each, and it all adds up. Here's another tip that I've never heard anyone else bring up before. There are a number of buildings in AoE 2 that you need to build very often, like farms, houses, walls, gates, etc., that you don't need to use a go-to command for. You don't need to press Control f to go to a farm, for instance. On the other hand, there are also a number of buildings that you only build a couple of times per game, but that you may want to use a go-to command for much more frequently, like the market, university, or even castle. If you can keep it all straight in your head, try mixing and matching these, which is what I do. I still have build market as the default M and build farm as the default F, but since control M is a bit of an awkward stretch and I don't need to control F to go to farm, I use it to go to my market. Similarly, I use the default U for university and E for house, but I use control E to go to my university. I do the same thing with castles and palisades. By default, you build a castle with V, but since you build relatively few castles in AoE 2 and you always take a couple of seconds to place them in the best possible location anyway, I decided they didn't need such a prime hotkey. I use K to build castles and V for palisade, but since I'm already used to control V to go to castle, I leave it as is. However, it is true that the more pairs of unmatching villager build and go-to commands you have, the harder your hotkey set can be to remember, so do this at your own discretion. As I mentioned before, it's ultimately a matter of finding whatever makes sense to you, so experiment with this yourself, and if it doesn't work, abandon it. Something else to consider is that there are a few convenient keys on the left-hand side of the keyboard that are either used for nothing or nothing important by default, and I would recommend finding something useful for them. In particular, Tab, Tilde, and the F keys. Oh, and if you don't know what I mean by Tilde, that's the key to the left of the number one. Personally, I use it for an extra control group. Most players seem to use the Tab key for Idle Villager, so try that out and see if it works for you. You definitely want to have a convenient Idle Villager key, regardless of what key it is. I like to think of the idle villager key as being kind of like your rearview mirror. You're supposed to glance in it every 5 or 10 seconds, even if you have no reason to, and the same should go for hitting idle villager. As for the F keys, while they are used for things by default, like going to the tech tree, pausing, activating score, and so on, none of these are things that need a hotkey with such prime real estate. You should definitely try to find something more useful for them, but admittedly I haven't figured out exactly what just yet myself. Lately I've been experimenting with using the F keys for the select all building commands. Right now I have F1 for select all barracks, F2 for archery ranges, F3 for stables, F4 for castles, F5 for siege shops, and F6 for docks. Although I have found these hotkeys to be useful in a lot of cases, I'm not sold on them yet. Often in team games or even 1v1 post imp, where you may have multiple production structures in different areas of the map, these hotkeys cease to be useful because you don't always want to be producing units from every single one of a given production structure. Still, the point is, consider finding something useful for these keys, as they're in pretty convenient locations. Also, if you don't have a mouse with extra buttons on the side, consider getting one. I think there's a limit to how many of these buttons you can productively use, but having the standard two extra buttons can certainly be useful. However, using extra mouse buttons isn't without its drawbacks. For instance, the Viper says that he doesn't like the idea of using hotkeys on a mouse because he thinks that you're unlikely to be active with your mouse while using them, so as he sees it, it's counterproductive in the long run. I think he has a point, but I also think it depends on what you're using your extra mouse buttons for. I use my extra mouse buttons for idle villager and idle military unit, and I don't think there's too much conflict there. But if you are going to use extra mouse buttons, try to bear this in mind. 
Here's another idea. If you don't like the idea of using any of the keys on the right hand side of the keyboard, consider using one of your extra mouse buttons as a modifier key. Instead of using keys like L, O, or P to build buildings, you could do extra mouse button A, extra mouse button S, etc., and simply reuse all of the more convenient keys for additional functions. There's certainly a steeper learning curve involved in doing this, but it may work for some people. Also, remember that you can use the middle mouse button for something too. Anyway, that's about all for this video. To recap, there is no perfect hotkey setup, but there are vague guidelines that might help you find your own way of doing things. Try to minimize how much you have to reposition your hand, but also be wary of putting similar things side by side that are easy enough to misclick. Above all else, try to notice when you make the same mistakes over and over again, and be careful not to adjust your hotkeys so drastically at once that even you can't remember them on the fly. That's all for this one though. As always, thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe, hit the bell, and all that. See you soon.